Young Uwe van der Plug, attualmente titolare della casa di processi di transizione presso l'Università di Wageningen, dove ha sviluppato con i suoi colleghi un nuovo approccio teorico che ha permesso di capire l'impressionante e multidimensionale eterogeneità dell'agricoltura europea, concettualizzando in termini concettualizzato in termini modalità di coltivazione. In precedenza è stato titolare della Cattedra di Sociologia Rurale, è stato membro per otto anni del Consiglio per le Aree Rurali. Benvenuto. Thank you very much, uh, Giuseppe. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm awaiting uh, the images, they are there. The strategic issue I will uh, discuss this afternoon is uh, the issue of, uh, of markets. I think uh, the struggle for stable markets, the struggle for uh, solidarity markets, and especially the struggle for uh, a bigger role for local economies is a very important uh, strategic issue for the social movements. In hegemonic discourse, uh, uh, the people talk about the market as if the market would be one single system that is governing all our economic activities, including uh, the production of food, the processing of food, the distribution of food, and even the consumption of food. Of course, this is not the case. There is not one single market. There is a plentitude of markets, and these markets differ considerably the one from the other. There are differences in prices. There are differences in the distribution of value added. Yes, sometimes uh, farmers, peasants get more, a bigger slice of the cake, sometimes they get less. Um, these markets are, are governed in different ways. Some markets uh, drain the peasant economy till the bones. Other markets are far more stimulating. They are a mechanism of emancipation. They are a mechanism in the struggle. All this implies that markets <coughs> increasingly are important battlegrounds for the social movements. Uh, this uh, first image uh, I got lost in my own uh, images. Uh, this first uh, image uh, typically belongs to uh, the world market. It's about uh, the control of uh, Cargill and other very big corporations that uh, control the big flow of commodities all over the world and who are able to impose uh, their conditions. Uh, at first sight, this is a completely different market. It's a local market in the Andean Mountains in Peru, but as is shown by the presence of this policeman representing the state and the trader representing capitals, these local markets often are uh, very much uh, controlled as well by capital. Here you have another image, this Kashba uh, in Morocco, and then this is uh, a telling image, it's the so-called morning market in the Haidian district of Beijing. Uh, it's in the northwest of, uh, of uh, Beijing. And it's interesting, currently at this moment the um, uh, municipality of Beijing wants to eliminate this market uh, in order to make space for uh, further rural develop for, uh, urban development. Now, it's interesting that the traders and the consumers and the peasant producers are struggling against this elimination. They are arguing this market is ours, it's our market, and if this market disappears, only the supermarkets remain in this area. Yeah, this is again uh, a reference to the social struggles related to the markets. Here you have uh, an image of a newly constructed uh, peasant market. It's the Mercati Contadino in, uh, in Rome. There are several of these markets dotted all over the country. And this phenomenon of newly uh, constructed markets is uh, emerging everywhere. This is an example from Brazil where the Ecovida movement uh, has been able to link different feiras, different uh, local markets. Uh, they link them through ecological principles and they have their own uh, means of transport. One of the guys involved in it is uh, this man. Uh, he's a producer, a producer of vegetables. And he got so fed up by the very low prices paid by supermarkets that he decided to process uh, the food himself. And then, of course, he had to, with others, to construct a new market because simply introducing this in the supermarket circuit would be uh, no good. 
Now, analytically speaking, uh, we have three types of market. We have the uh, markets that are controlled by the big food empires, by the big uh, food industries and supermarket chains. Secondly, there are markets that resist, uh, albeit only partly, uh, such control from the big uh, food empires. And thirdly, there are newly constructed markets. These are peasant markets, it's about uh, community uh, supported agriculture, it's about short circuits, it's about solidarity based markets. In all these new markets, it are the social movements that play a very important role. Let's have a look to these uh, different uh, analytical categories. This is evidently the world market, the big flows that are controlled by uh, uh, the, the big corporations. And the interesting point is that only 16%, one six, only 16% of all food produced in the world crosses borders. Yeah, 84% percent remains in the country where it has been produced. Yep. And 16% is these big flows, but through these big flows, uh, the corporations uh, exert a lot of uh, uh, impact, a lot of, uh, they can impose their conditions in many places. Uh, this is just an illustration of uh, local and regional markets, and the problem is increasingly that these once relatively autonomous markets are increasingly controlled uh, by food empires who can impose uh, their own logic, their own prices, uh, their own conditions, their own uh, quality labels, their own images, yet they are capable also to control these uh, local markets. And in this way, new relations of appropriation and uh, of dominations are created. There are markets that resist as well, yet that are not fully controlled by uh, food empires. A very interesting example is here from Italy, the market for canina meat. Uh, these are very big animals, uh, but they are also very sensitive. Yeah, you cannot have them in feedlots, you need peasants who care for their animals. And you need very capable butchers yeah, to deal with this meat. It's difficult to introduce it in the very big uh, retail chains. Uh, here you have another example. Yeah, partly, uh, it's partly rooted in artigianality, in quality. These are material lines of defense, and uh, uh, it's, it, we, we should further help to strengthen these markets that represent uh, up to a degree uh, resistance. Uh, there is, this is an image of a newly constructed market. Uh, uh, farmers, peasants, uh, producers of milk here in the north of Italy uh, got so fed up with the very low prices with, uh, paid uh, especially by Parmalat that they decided to create their own local markets using uh, new uh, technologies uh, for, uh, for the distribution. They go to places where uh, many people uh, come together. Uh, this, is uh, this is an advantage for both producers and consumers. Now the point is, and Rodolfo illustrated this for Argentina, there are many, many, many of this kind of markets. They are all over Europe, they are all over uh, other continents, and there is a huge variety, a huge heterogeneity. Single markets might be small, but together they represent a considerable uh, force. Now these new markets, uh, it are specific segments of a wider market. They are the outcome of social struggles. Uh, they have a, a unique uh, infrastructure. I will come uh, to that. And they are distinctive. They carry distinction. And the distinction of these markets might reside in the quality of the products, in the origin of the products, in the process of production. It might reside in producer-consumer relations. It might uh, reside in solidarity between these uh, uh, groups in the political struggles they engage in. It might even reside in the price. Uh, here you have a, a small market of the Netherlands uh, for lamb meat. Yeah, that uh, was threatened very much by imports of cheap uh, meat from uh, New Zealand. Now, through the origin, uh, sheep in the Netherlands are very important to maintain the dikes. So the origin, the quality, and the process of production were used to create uh, a market that actively defends defends the interests of the uh, of the herders. Uh, they created a very interesting uh, market by not certifying uh, the meat, but certifying the restaurants who are uh, allowed to commercialize uh, their meat. 
But the uh, distinction may also uh, reside in the price. This is once again the uh, peasant market of Rome. It's very crowded, you have to take uh, your number. Uh, and the prices are systematically 25% below the supermarket prices. Yeah, they have uh, real-time connection with uh, the computers uh, that give the information of uh, supermarket prices, and their price is uh, below. Now, all this looks uh, uh, nice, but also very small. Not necessarily such markets are small. Uh, without going too detail, yeah, I refer to some examples of China, where, uh, uh, especially through uh, state programs, very interesting new markets, new nested markets have been created. The same occurs, of course, worldwide through programs for uh, uh, public procurement. Brazil uh, started this with a very intelligent uh, uh, program that created many new markets through the rule that 30% of uh, ingredients for uh, school meals are to be uh, supplied locally by, uh, by small producers. Um, I will show you something of the uh, specific infrastructure that is in all this with an example from the Netherlands. Uh, because it shows the political importance of even the, the seemingly small struggles. This is an, uh, uh, the, the, the classical situation. Some farms, the blue boxes, one farm having uh, a farm shop, the, the green one uh, selling dairy products, cheese uh, made on farm, etc. And then slowly uh, uh, more and more farmers started to uh, create their own uh, farm shops, often the, the rural women, the, the peasant woman did so. Um, and this uh, grew considerably, and then they decided to, uh, to cooperate and to go from single shops to a new market. And this new market was constructed in seemingly a very simple but very strong uh, way, in, in, in a peasant way. Yeah, the strength was in the simplicity. Uh, they decided to, and this is represented by the red circle, to get an, uh, a lorry with a refrigerator and to bring the products from one shop to all the other shops. Immediately two advantages. The shops were far more attractive for consumers and for the farmers it uh, went that they had far more shops to sell their products. Now this has been developed uh, very much. Uh, it became very strong and all over the place. But as shown by the red circle, this, the infrastructure, the lorry and uh, the, the, the trajectory there, it's, it's circular. Now, and this seems very self-evident, but when you compare it with the uh, big supermarket change, yeah, they have the regional uh, distribution centers uh, where lorries come and lorries leave, and they compose a radial pattern, yeah, which is completely opposed to the circular pattern of... Uh, of the, uh, of the uh, farm shops. Yeah, and having this circular pattern, you will understand there is far less food miles, far less use of uh, uh, fossil energy, uh, there are less losses, uh, there is a better quality, freshness is far better guaranteed. So here in the details um, recites uh, the strings. Now it's often argued that this is a political argument that for especially the big cities, they need big agriculture, big enterprises to provide them with food. This image is from uh, Beijing. It was taken during the night. Beijing is a city with 20 million people. It is provided from peasant agriculture. Yeah, on average, uh, very small farms. Uh, this uh, market, it's called Xinfadi. It's having 126 hectares. It's a huge uh, market. Before you understand it completely, it's, it's really uh, uh, hard work. Here is uh, every day 16,000 tons of fruits and 16,000 tons of vegetables uh, are provided by, uh, directly by peasants or by uh, small traders, medium traders, some large traders who provide their products from peasants. Yet this market system is crucial in uh, feeding uh, uh, Beijing. Now, does it make a difference having these, these let's say, these markets that are uh, uh, favorable for uh, peasant agriculture? I give you an, uh, some data from uh, recent calculation. Uh, this refers to the Netherlands. 
out of every uh, hundred, uh, no, let me say it differently, of total agricultural production in the Netherlands, only 23% goes to the farm. If you compare this with China, where markets are far more uh, important, in China, 59% goes to uh, the farms. Yeah, this is a huge difference, and this relates to the fact that markets are in the West are controlled by the big food empires, whilst in China, at first sight, very contradictory, markets abound. Yeah, but there are markets governed in a way that is favorable to peasants. Um, I could give you more data, but uh, I prefer to go to the synthesis. Uh, I want to systematically compare the uh, peasant markets and the uh, large uh, food markets by asking uh, these well-known questions. Who owns what? Who does what? Who gets what? And what is done with the surpluses? Who owns what? The linkages in the big uh, food markets are controlled by the food empires. Instead, in the peasant markets, the markets are owned by producers and consumers together. It's a commons. Who does what? In the general food market, farmers are reduced to producing raw materials only. Yeah, instead, in the peasant markets, the role of farmers, of peasants, of, uh, of the others is, is far wider. They are involved in marketing, in processing, in a redesign of products. Who gets what? It's evident that the price, yeah, that the value added that farmers get in peasant markets is far higher than, uh, the, price, than the, the value added they get in the global markets. And what is done with the surpluses in the global markets? Yeah, what is gained, the social wealth, is used to further strengthen the food empires, to take over even more uh, other enterprises. In uh, peasant markets, in the newly emerging markets, it's used to strengthen peasant uh, agriculture. So to conclude, in uh, terms of uh, strategy, uh, I've indicated that markets are very important, but markets different. They are different arenas for social struggle. And this implies that the strategy to be used is to be a multiple. multiple. Yeah, the fights are needed for better regulation in the, in the large markets. Uh, at the same time, uh, public procurement is to be supported and to be improved. It's very important to construct, to actively construct new markets, new solidarity markets that carry uh, solidarity relations between consumers and producers. Yeah, it's a moment out of political struggle. And finally, small and medium enterprises, the creation of it is to be supported uh, when it comes to food processing because today it's a highly monopolized sector. That's all. I thank you for your attention.